Hi everyone, this lesson today is for Algebra 2 uh, honor students, chapter 4, 4.2 and 4.3. Um, we are going to be covering solving systems of linear equations and also second order determinants. Um, so I want to start off with one of my favorite Marvel characters um, who has is, is illustrating uh, a point of intersection. Um, that right there is really cool. Um, so our learning targets today, um, our objectives, are basically to learn and review the graphing method, the elimination method, Kramer's rule, which is determinants, um, and also talk about the differentiate between the consistent and inconsistent graphs, and then what, what gives a solution and what is not solution. Um, this guy, Johnny Bravo, also one of my favorites, um, this guy, I like him in this picture because he's illustrating a line like y equals something right um so yeah that's awesome slope of zero right okay um use your arms to show me what you think a consistent graph would look like so um everybody should be doing that right now and uh johnny bravo down here at the bottom left is actually showing you giving you like a little hint um but if you have a consistent graph um what you're actually looking at is a graph that has at least one solution, at least one solution. So it could have more solutions than that. Um, so basically, if it doesn't have one solution or it doesn't have more than one solution, um, then it would be what's called inconsistent. And if it's inconsistent, then there's no solutions, meaning there's no solutions if there's no intersection points. Because when I'm asking you to solve the system, all right, when I ask you to solve the system, what I'm asking you to do is to find the intersection point. That's it. I want to know where my two lines are crossing, if they cross. If they don't cross, I want to know that. But they could cross, or they actually could be the same line. Um, so we're going to get into that. Uh, recognizing what the graphs might look like, whether they're consistent or inconsistent. Um, for this graph, well, let's look at this one. This one right here would be inconsistent. Um, the reason that would be inconsistent um, would be because there's no solutions. Um, if there's no solutions, then there's no intersection points. And so um, in this case right here, which is going to be most, most often the scenario, is you're going to have one intersection point, um, and that's what we're looking for. Where, does, where do the graphs cross? And where do, they, where do they have the same value? What is that one value? And we actually, later on, we're gonna call that the break even point. Um, where do they meet? Um, and so in this case, this would be consistent. Also, this would be consistent. Um, and the reason why it would be consistent is because it has more than one. Because consistent, uh, solu consistent solutions and systems actually have to have um, one or more. They have to have at least one solution. And this one has one, but this actually has a lot more than one. Those have an infinite number of solutions. So first method we're going to be talking about is the graphing method. So for this method, you're going to graph this. Now, whether you graph it by intercepts, remember where we said x equal to zero and y equal to zero, or if you graph by solving for y. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put everything in slope intercept form. So we have first equation here. Uh, we have y equals negative 2x plus 5. And for this equation here, I'm going to also solve for y. So I get negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. And in this case, I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. And then I'm going to go y equals 3 halves uh, x minus 2. So there's one equation right there. My second equation is this one right here. It's already solved or it's simplified to solve for y and put it, put it in slope intercept form. Um, I'm going to go up 5, 3, 4, 5. My slope is down 2 over 1, positive 1. Um, in this case, because it's a negative slope, it is dropping down. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So this is going to graph down like that. For this problem here, I am going to, for that equation, I am going to start at negative 2. And then I'm going to go positive 1, 2, 3 over 2. Now, I'm just going to say we're super lucky here. All right. Um, because most of the time, it is not very recognizable to find the intersection point. The odds of, of actually finding it and landing right on it, uh, like, 
an axe, you know, at the corner, so it's exactly what it appears to be, is really um, rare. And so it does look like this is, this answer is um, two one is what it looks like to me. Now, here's the thing: the graphing method is actually the most unreal, unreliable method there is. The reason for that is because of all of the, you know, it could be like a half, or you know, it's hard to see based on just an act, you know, just a graph. Um, so for me, I need to see if that's my intersection point. Remember, when you're looking for, and when you're trying to solve a system, this, this question right here, solving a system of equations, I want the, inter that's what I'm asking. I'm looking for the intersection uh, point. That's what I want. That's it, I want that point. And so in order for me to see if this is actually my answer, I'm gonna plug it in to make sure that it works for both of the equations. So I'm gonna plug this in. One is equal to negative two uh, times x, two, add five. So let's see, one equals negative four plus five. Uh, one equals one, check. So far, so good. Let's see if this is a point on this graph too. So we're gonna go one equals three halves times x, x is two, uh, minus two. Twos are gonna cancel. I'm going to get 1 equals 3 times 1, which is 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 equals 1. All set. We are in good shape. So my solution, so this means therefore, by the way, therefore the solution or the system solution is 2, 1. And you would box that up. Um, so just talking about um, one more thing. This is a graphical approach. Um, in solving systems of equations with the graphing method. Again, you're gonna have one intersection point that's consistent, two intersection points also consistent, no intersection points inconsistent. Um, also using the graphing method, um, just keep in mind, uh, there's all different ways. I mean, we haven't done this. This is not what we're doing today because we haven't actually done quadratics yet. That's next chapter. So when we complete next chapter, we're going to be coming back to um, systems of quadratic equations. That's going to be fun. Um, the second method of solving a system of equations is called the substitution method. And the, you know, the rules are for the substitution method is basically um, solve one of the equations and isolate the variable. Try to get the variable by itself. And then, then you're gonna take that equation and substitute it into the other equation. So in this problem right here, I think what makes the most sense is to solve this top equation for y because that's just y equals, right? And I'm gonna plug that in. So I'm gonna go y is equal to negative two x plus five. And this is what y equals. And so that means that where y is on the other equation, that that for that value of y, negative 2x plus 5, goes there. So we're going to go 3x minus 2y. Y is this value here. And so let me erase that. Okay, so y is this value here. So that's going to be negative 2x plus 5 and then equals 4. So let's simplify uh, and solve. So we're going to go 3x, and then this times this is what? P plus 4x minus 10 equals 4. So we have 7x minus 10 equals 4. So we have 7x is equal to ugh, add 4, so 14. So this has x equal to 2. So, so far, I have x equal to 2. But I don't want just x. I'm not done. You're not one and done. You have got to find X and Y because the point X, Y, that is going to give me my intersection point. I need the intersection point if there is one. So I'm going to take this two and I'm going to go all the way back up to the top and plug that in for X. So I'm going to get Y is equal to negative two times X, which is two, add five. So Y is equal to negative four plus five. So Y is equal to one. Okay, so I've got X and I've got Y. And if this is the case, true, um, then we have two comma one, and that would be my intersection point. Now, of course, if you have the opportunity to know if you got your answer right, you should take it. And in this case, if you plug this point in to not just one equation, but both equations, 
and you get the left side equal to the right side, then you do have the right answer. And so take that opportunity, the extra one minute it takes to do that. So let's do that, two, one. So we're gonna go two times two, add one, does that equal five? Four plus one is five, check. Now I'm gonna plug in two, one to the other equation. So three times two uh, minus two times y, which is one, does that equal four? Let's see, six minus two equals four, check. So we know now that this point is the intersection point between the two graphs, the two equations. And remember, when I'm asking you to solve a system, I'm asking you to find the intersection point. Um, the next question is um, by elimination method. Okay, so for this method right here, um, for elimination, your job is to basically work it out so that the equations, when you either add them together or you subtract them, to, or you subtract them, that the x or the y is going to be eliminated. It's going to cancel. So that's our objective. Now, sometimes you have to um, so you have to multiply the numerator or sorry the um, one of the equations by a number in order to eliminate the x or the y. So that's really important that you know that, that you're aware that you, you might have to multiply. Um, so, so far we've got the graphing method done, we've got the substitution method done, and now we're going to talk about elimination. So if you look at these two equations, these are my two equations, and actually if I just add the two equations, do you see what's going to happen? 3x minus plus, plus, right, negative 3x is zero. That's gone. And so then I've got 5y uh, plus negative 2y, which makes 3y, and then I've got 7 plus negative 1, which is 6, so I get y is equal to 2, right? Get that value, plug it back into one of the other equations. So in this case, I'm just going to plug it into the top one, so I would get 3x plus 5 times y, which is 2, just solve for 2, um, is equal to 7. Let's see, 10 uh, so that's 10. So 3x, so I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. I get 3x is equal to negative 3x equals negative 1. So for this intersection point, I have negative 1, comma 2. And I need to check that. I would absolutely hope that you... So to double check to see if we have the right answer, we can plug this point that we have, that it's a system solution um, by the method of elimination, and we plug it into one of the equations or both to make sure. So we would say um, 3 times negative 1 uh, plus 5 times 2 is equal to 7, and we get negative 3 plus 10, and that equals 7, so that's right. And then we try the other um, equation as well. So negative 3 times negative 1, uh, let's see, minus 2 times y, which is 2, is equal to negative 1. So we have 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. So negative 1 does equal negative 1. Check. So we have the right answer. Um, so solve the system of linear equations for this problem. Um, again, you know, you can either do substitution or elimination. For me, I think I would choose to elim choose elimination and possibly um, multiply this equation down at the bottom by positive 4. Because in doing that, the, when I multiply this by 4, the y's are going to cancel. So let's do that. So we got 2x minus 4y is equal to negative 7. And then we have 20, 4 times 5, which is 20, uh, x plus 4y is equal to negative 4. And the 4y's are going to cancel because you get, actually, when you add those together, you get, neg you get 0y. Um, but 0 times anything is 0, so that's not there. Um, and you do not have to write that. Um, 22x plus 0y equals negative 11. So you have 22x is equal to negative 11. If I divide both sides by uh, 22, I get, um, what do I get? Negative 1 half. So x is equal to negative 1 half. So, so far, I've got half of my system. So then I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it back into um, one of the equations. And in doing so, if I pick this one, so 5 times negative 1 half, add y is equal to negative 1, I get negative 5 halves, uh, excuse me, negative 5 halves uh, plus y is equal to negative 1. I'm going to add 
five halves to the right side and the left side, and that's going to go away. Um, that's gone. So then I have y is equal to, and then what I would do here is I would just get a common denominator. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. So I've got negative 2 uh, plus 5, which is 3. So my answer being 3 halves. So again, um, you've got negative 1 half and then comma 3 halves. And then absolutely check your answers because if you have the opportunity, like I said before, to get 100% on your test, then check every one of your answers to make sure you have the correct solution. Um, elimination means to remove. Um, this method works to remove variables until there is just one left. I do want to say, similar to the last problem, and this problem, of course, I'm going to multiply this by 2, right? However, I do want to, before I do that, um, I do want to say this. I could, I'm not tied to that multiplying by 2. I could multiply this equation by negative 3 and the bottom equation by 2. Because in doing that, what that does is it gives me negative 6x minus 3y is equal to negative 15. By the way, this gets multiplied by everything. And that's one of the biggest mistakes is this value over here. Most people forget to actually do that, um, to distribute all the way across the equal sign. Then I would have 6x here minus 4y is equal to 8. And I'm just going to keep going since I've gotten this far. These cancel. Again, 0x, you don't have to write that. You get negative 7y is equal to uh, negative 7, right? Negative 15 plus 8. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. I'm going to get y equals 1. And remember, our job is to find the intersection point, which basically means I need x, y. I found y. i got to find x now. So I'm going to take my y value and plug it back into the equation. So I'm going to get uh, 2x plus y, y is 1, equals 5. And I'm going to get uh, 2x is equal to 4, x equals 2. So there you go. So that's my intersection point, I think. Um, there, therefore, that's what that means, right? Um, I'm going to plug my answer into the bottom equation and see if it works. Um, so I'm going to go 3 times x, which is 2, minus 2 times y, which is 1. Hopefully that equals 4. 6 minus 2, 4. 4 equals 4. Check. So it's always a good idea if you can and you have the ability to check your solutions, do it. Um, this one is asking me to solve by the graphing method. All right. Um, this one we're going to get y is equal to negative x plus 8. And for this one, I'm going to go 2y uh, equals negative 3x plus 19. This is not looking good. <laughs> Divide by 2 all throughout. And I get y is equal to negative 3 halves x plus 19 halves. Oh, my gosh. So what is that? Uh, 18, so that's 9 and a half. Okay, so this is what I was saying earlier. So here we go, 9 and a half, like over here. Um, down 3, over 2, down 3, over... Okay, so this looks like it's going this way, right? Okay, this equation up here, uh-oh, uh this one has, starting at 8, which is lower than the 9 and a half, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. Down one over one. So this one actually looks like I'm going to cross somewhere. I have no idea where I'm crossing. And, and this is the actual problem with the graphing method. Like I said before, it is the most unreliable method. I would say if, let's say, there was a test and I had an intersection point in each quadrant, I would pick the first quadrant. Other than that, I have no idea. So this is what you have to do. Check it with another method. Okay, so if I were to check this with another method, I, I could write, I have already solved for y, so why don't I try substitution? All right, so let's try that. Um, 3x plus 2 times y, plug this in to the y into the other equation. Um, so I have 3x plus 2 times the y, y is negative x plus 8 um, equals 19. Let's see what we get. Um, we have 3x minus 2x, right, because we're distributing. Uh, what is that? Plus 16 equals 19. So I have x, and if I subtract 16 from both sides, it does look like 3x minus 2x is x equals 19 minus 16 is 3. x is 3. 
That would be awesome. Okay, so we have three so far. Let's see. Plug it back into y. Um, y is very nicely done over here. So we're going to say y equals negative x plus 8. I'm going to plug that x in right here. So I'm going to say, well, y equals the opposite of x, which is 3, plus 8. So y equals uh, 5. So 3, 5. So this should be my intersection point. But again, I, I just really can't say this enough. Check your work. Plug it back in. 3 plus 5 equals 8. 3 times uh, 3 is 9, plus 2 times 5 is 10. 9 plus 10 is 19. Check your work because, I mean, look at it. This is 3, 5. I mean, does that look like 3, 5? If you're graphing this and you start getting the, um, like the halves, you always want to solve it by a different method just to check, okay? Um, so this leads us almost to our fourth method. So we've got graphing method, elimination, substitution, and we're leading towards uh, Kramer's rule, which deals with determinants. Now thinking about a determinant, if you've never heard of a determinant, this, this right here means the determinant of matrix A. So then you should be asking, well, uh, what's a matrix, right? That's a matrix. Um, we read the matrix the matrices by rows by column, okay? Rows uh, times col by column, okay? It's like length times width, but it's like, a, it's a measurement, okay? And so row by column, uh, column, and you, what you do here is this. So like I've got two rows, right? One, two, and I've got two columns. So we call this a two by two. Now, how do you solve a matrix or a matrice. So the way you do that is basically there's a rule for the determinant and that's this value right here. And what that means is it's going to be a scalar value. Scalar, um, scalar means numerical. Okay. So that's going to be uh, numerical. It's going to be a number. So whatever this value is for A and D here and here, you're going to go A times D, right? I'm going to multiply those two together. So A times D minus these two values here, B times C. And you need to watch out for this because that's a minus. And what that means is that's going to be the opposite of whatever B times C is. So let's look at this determinant. So I've got the matrix, right? I got an array of numbers. I've got this matrix C, which is two by two. I've got this matrix C, which is, remember, row by column. See, this is like row one, row two, right? Column one, column two, column three. That's row by column. So we have two rows and we have three columns. So you say this is a two by three matrix. Now, if I want to find the determinant for this value, right? Let's do that. Let's solve it. Let's do it. We're going to get, remember what I said, three times six, right? 18 minus four times eight. What is that? 32? So 18 minus 32, that's a negative value, right? So we're going to keep the negative. Subtract 32 minus 18. Uh, borrow, what is that? 12, this is 2, this is 14. Uh, my answer for this determinant is negative 14. And we are only right now um, finding these determinants of 2 by 2s. That's it. To do this one, again, we're going to go 4 times 8, so 4 times 8, uh, minus 3 times 6, so that's going to be uh, 32, yep, and so we got 32 minus 18, oh, I just did that, okay, so anyway, that's going to be 14 again, and this is equal to 14, okay, so when you're going to use this is when you're using it to solve a system. Now, uh, we've already done this problem, right? But we're gonna do this again, but we're gonna use Kramer's rule. And this is how you set it up, okay? So, so this is it. You're gonna go x is equal to, so for the x value, I want you to draw this little determinant on top and this little determinant on the bottom, like that. This this value in this little box right here, and remember, this, these have to actually be in standard form, okay? And those values, the values of the coefficients are what goes in the denominator. So that's 2, 1. See the 1 in front of the y? And then 3, and then negative 2. 
like a pattern, you know, it's like a ray, a ray. That's cool. Um, now, if I'm solving for X, these two numbers here, I'll use a different color. These two numbers here go in the X column. So that's going to be five and then four. Okay. If I'm solving for Y, those values go in the right column. So let me set that up while I'm while I'm talking here. So y equals, I'm going to have an x and a y value here. And so that 5, 4, if I'm solving for y, goes in the y coordinate spot. So that would be here, y column, right? x, y. So now what's cool about this is that the denominators are the same. So 2, 1, and then 3, negative 2. Still this box right here, once x and y are on the same side. And remember, that needs to be in uh, standard form, okay? Now, to find out what the last value is, so see this value, these two here, what goes here is these two. They just be, they're brought up. That goes one, negative two. Here is gonna be two, three. So whatever's on that bottom comes up. All right, so here we go. We're gonna solve each one of these determinants. So the first, the top, right, we have a numerator, numer a numerator and a denominator. So we're gonna go five times negative two, which is negative 10. Remember, we're subtracting. It's minus four times one, which is four. So negative 10 minus four is negative 14. Check. On the top on this side, we're gonna go two times four, so two times four minus three times five. So that's gonna be eight minus 15, which is negative seven. All right. Now the denominators, I mean, those are both exactly the same. So um, unless you're paranoid about getting the wrong answer, do it again, right? I actually, I usually do it again just because. Um, but anyway, so we have two times negative two is negative four and then minus three times one, three. That's negative seven. I'm gonna check just again. Negative four, right? minus three is negative seven. Same answer, you don't have to actually do it twice. Um, anyway, negative 14 divided by negative seven is two. Negative seven divided by negative seven is one, which means two, one, people, that's my intersection point for these two graphs. And of course, you should check your answers, right? Again, why wouldn't I check my answers? So I would go two times two plus y, y is one, equals five, so four plus one, it does equal five, et cetera. Check your answers. Now, this is what we call Kramer's rule. We use it for determinants. Um, this guy named Gabriel Kramer, he actually had a very cool life, and so I've got a little there thing on the side, um, but um, he actually did something really amazing when he was only 18. Um, he had, he submitted his uh, theory of sound at age 18. How crazy. Okay, so let's do one more uh, Kramer's rule problem. So let's get started on this. So again, m first step is to make sure that it is in uh, standard form, which it is, meaning the X and the Y um, are on the same side. Now, I do see this negative sign. So standard form, um, basically this, for Kramer's rule, we don't have to have this negative sign here, but um, we can. We just need the X and the Y on the same side. Um, all right, so to start off, we're going to go x equals. We're going to put in our determinants for x, and uh, we're going to set this up also at the same time for y. Again, this box right here, that's my denominator. Those coefficients there, we've got 5, negative 4, negative 1, and 1. And I want you to write that on both of the denominators. So we have 5, negative 4, negative 1, and 1. If I'm solving for x, this these two values here drop down to x. So that's going to be negative 10 on top, 2 on the bottom. If I'm solving for y, the negative 10 and 2 are here. Because basically points are x, y, right? So base, this column is x and this column is my y column. And that's why that is 10 right there. Um, okay, so for the other values uh, to put here, you're going to bring that negative four, one up. So that's gonna be negative four, one. You just take this and move it up. Also five, negative one. So five, negative one. 
So now we just solve all, all of our determinants, right? We're gonna remember cross, multiply. So we go five times one, so five times one minus negative one times negative four, which is positive, right? So that's four. So five minus four is one. So my denominator is one. Um, I would just, I always do this twice just to check. Um, five minus uh, four, four is one, so we go one. So then on the top left, we have negative 10 times one, so we have negative 10 minus negative four times two, so minus negative eight, which means plus. So negative 10 plus eight is negative two. So my x coordinate is negative two. And then for y, we have five times two, which is so we go 10 minus uh, negative one times 10, which is 10. 10 minus 10 is zero. Now zero divided by anything is zero. Now we would have a different story if the zero was on the denominator because that would mean that that value is undefined. But in this case, the zero is not on the denominator, zero is on top and zero divided by anything is still zero. So my intersection point should be negative two zero. Of course, I have to check my answers. So I'm gonna plug that in and I'm gonna go, um, the opposite of x, which is the opposite of negative 2, plus y, y is 0, um, should equal 2. So that's 2 plus 0 equals 2, check. And then do it again. Just do it. And, it, you know, you're, you're going to feel more confident that you have the right answer if you do that. Now, there is actually five step, five different ways, six, but... Um, I want to just show you, you know, to set this up, and then we're going to actually talk about this more in class, but um, the objective for this one is another way of solving. If you are sort of a tech kid and you like coding and whatnot, this might be your method. Uh, you probably also liked Kramer's rule. Um, this is another one of those where you use an array, where your goal is to get this, this, just like this, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. And when you have the array that looks like that, whatever your answer is for X and Y are over there, okay? So, so let's try this, okay? So we put the values into our array, and we've got two, we've got one, three, negative two. That's how it starts off. We have this little line that goes like that, and then five, four. Again, my X and my Y are on the same side, okay? Um, all right, so... The first thing we want to do, there is sort of like a method to this madness. Um, this right here is what I want to do first. I want a zero there first. So I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get this term to be a zero. Also, another thing is, is I can only um, change one row at a time. So because I'm looking to change that bottom row, I'm not touching the top row. So this is then going to stay 2, 1, 5. Now, in this space here, this is my workspace. I can do whatever I want over here. That stuff doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate over to my other space over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this sort of like elimination. So if I wanted to make this term a zero here, I'm going to say negative three times row one plus two times row two. And what that means is if I multiplied row three, the top row by negative three, I'm gonna get negative six, negative three, negative 15. And two times the bottom row. And that's gonna be uh, six, negative four, eight. And then when I add those up, those cancel. And guess what? That becomes a zero. And then this becomes a negative seven and this becomes a negative seven. So I've got negative seven and negative seven. And so look, this value here is a zero check. The second thing I wanna do is this. There's an order to this. So second, that's what I wanna do second. Make that a one. And the way you do that is again, one, you can only change one row at a time. So I'm not touching this top row, can't touch it. Bottom row though, I'm actually gonna take row two and divide by negative seven. So I've got zero divided by set, zero divided by negative seven is zero, negative seven divided by negative seven is one, and um, negative seven divided by negative seven is one. So 
it looks like so far, see, that's exactly what I want. See, that means that that y is 1. So right now, I've got this value for 1. All right, right on. Okay, so let's keep going. Now remember, I don't want to change row 2 anymore because that's like exactly how I want it. So I'm not changing row 2 anymore. But, oops, I can manipulate it. So what that means is in my workspace, my next job is to make this value uh, over here. I want a zero. Wait a second. Um, I want this value right here to be next. So that's third. I want to work on that third. Okay. So to make that a zero, right now they're just one, one. I'm just going to very simply go uh, row two minus row one. So what's row two? Zero, one, one. Take away row one, which is two, one, five. So zero minus two is negative two. That's going to be here. Uh, one minus one is zero. That's here. And then one minus five is negative four. And that's here. And so the last thing I need to do is to make this value right here a one. And all I have to do for that is take row one and divide by negative two. So I'm going to rewrite my rows again. I'm not changing row two. And that stays. And so I'm taking row one, dividing by negative two. So I get one. Zero divided by negative two, zero. Negative four divided by negative two, two. And so what I've got is my intersection point, And this is called augmented matrices. This is kind of cool, right? Um, anyway, not everybody likes this way. Um, so this, you don't have to do this one on the test. Just Kramer's rule though, for sure, Kramer's rule. Um, so your homework tonight are these problems. Um, I want you to vary up the different uh, methods that you use. I want you to use graphing method. I want you to use substitution. I want you to use elimination. And I want you to use Kramer's rule. All of those methods are going to be um, on your quiz or test and midterm. It's coming up very soon. So thanks for watching and I hope that helped you.